Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. On the show today, we explore the benefits of having an efficient database system for the collection and analysis of crime and violence statistics. Plus, reminding you of the 211 Child Abuse Helpline and helping you to utilize small spaces for farming. There is so much more within the half hour. Stay with us. What are we are your full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> They say the people them in you know, them come here, you know. But you see when our people decide, say the other people them free paper burn up. Them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta collect you know? medal. Come on, tap, we did you know? that. The celebrations are slated to begin on January first, two thousand and twenty-two. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site, and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre why it pre <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration yeah. I forgot don't know the app to get the updates then Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, July 21, 2022. Local farmers can now benefit from up to $1 billion in loans through a new Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ program. The Agribiz Loans and Scholarship Program, which was launched on Tuesday, is being delivered by the DBJ in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Micro, small and medium-sized farmers will be able to access concessional loans of up to $30 million at an 8.75% interest rate for up to 10 years. The program will also provide training in finance as well as technical assistance through a partnership with the Agroinvestment Corporation, AIC. The launch of the Agribusiness Loan and Scholarship is the type of investment that Jamaica needs. It's the type of investment that the sector needs if we are to boost food security. Meanwhile, Jamaica's agricultural output and food security are expected to be boosted with the declaration of the Rio Cobri and Mid-Clarendon as irrigation areas. The declaration will increase access to irrigation water for communities such as Old Harbor, Bernard Lodge and Heartlands in St. Catherine, as well as Rhymesbury, Vernon Field and Mitchelltown in Clarendon. The orders were tabled during Tuesday's sitting of the House of Representatives by Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Pernell Charles Jr. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries we have set out the following objectives under the program, agricultural production, productivity and food security. A, to increase agricultural production by at least 15% to meet domestic export and manufacturing input demand by 2025. Jamaica is now in receipt of $1.05 billion to support its climate resilience, poverty reduction and livelihood protection programs. The funds which stretch over a five-year period are being spent under a project dubbed a Jamaican path from hills to ocean. It is jointly financed by the European Union Global Climate Change Alliance Plus and the Government of Jamaica. The project aims to sustain the island's watersheds, coastlines, marine and land resources while empowering Jamaicans to protect the environment. This will be done through the implementation of integrated landscape and coastal management interventions in vulnerable watershed areas such as the Wagwater River in St. Mary, Rio Nuevo and White River in St. Anne and Rio Bueno in Trelawney. Also targeted are wetland ecosystems in Trelawney, St. Anne, St. Catherine and Clarendon. At Tuesday's launch, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Matthew Samuda, reiterated the importance of environmental protection to sustainable economic growth. This project is critical. It will touch approximately 46% of your population in some way, shape or form. Its impact will be felt by those who don't even know that it exists. We are in the throes of climate change. It is not future-proofing. It is about survival today. It is about creating the base of our economic prosperity today. Because the climate has changed and the weather patterns have already changed. Government is moving forward with the introduction of electronic warrants for motorists without standing tickets. 
Justice Minister Delroy Chuck made the announcement during his contribution to the debate on the Transport Authority Amendment Bill, which was passed in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The legislation will help to bring into effect the new Road Traffic Act. You have some indiscipline and lawless motorists who feel that these tickets can be ignored because, Madam Speaker, more than half of them don't pay. The government need to respond to ensure that when the police police the roads and issue tickets, that they are complied with because, Madam Speaker, we need discipline and order on the roads. Minister Chuck says over the last five years, the police have issued more than 500,000 tickets annually, with an average of 282,000 of these ending up in court and fewer than 70,000 paid. He points out that when the provisions of the Road Traffic Acts come into effect, it will be compulsory for motorists to pay their tickets before they can renew their driver's licenses. The continued revitalization of downtown Kingston has received a significant boost. That's due in part to Tuesday's opening of the Rock Hotel on the corner of King Street and Ocean Boulevard on the Kingston waterfront. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has welcomed the hotel, saying it will bring more income to people's pockets while returning social and economic activity to downtown Kingston. The Prime Minister adds that the development aligns with government's plans for the area, which are taking shape. Among them is the recent completion of revetment works along Port Royal Street to support a boardwalk, the opening of the new Foreign Affairs Building, and striking a deal with the World Bank to fund a master plan for downtown Kingston. The new Houses of Parliament Building, construction of residential developments, as well as the replacement of the sewer system are also in train. To others who are listening who are considering investing in downtown Kingston, now is the time to do it. The government is a strong and determined partner in the development of downtown Kingston. The Rock Hotel is a four-star, 12-story building that will also house residential units. It was developed through a partnership involving Pan Jam Investments and Hilton Tapestry Collection. And finally, honorary patron of the Cecil Cooper Foundation, Juliet Holness, has donated $200,000 to be given as bursaries to students at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts. Mrs. Holness, who made the donation at the recently held Cecil Cooper Foundation Closing Cocktail Award Ceremony, also presented a $450,000 scholarship to final year student at the institution, Maurice Hibbert. During the ceremony, Mrs. Holness also awarded bursaries valued at $50,000 each to three students. Shania Chanteloup from the School of Drama, Renetto Fuller from the School of Visual Arts, and the third student studying artist management, Alyssa Salmon. Too many people do not understand or appreciate the contribution of those who have engaged in the arts. And Jamaica 60 is the time to have more and more of us as Jamaicans understand. The Cecil Cooper Foundation scholarship was launched in June to assist students at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts finance their studies. Annually, several art students will be awarded bursaries and scholarships from the foundation. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The tinting of your windscreen, cut it out. Public passenger vehicles, according to the Transport Authority Act, not supposed to have tints. I'm appealing to motorists out there. We have removed many plates because of fandangles that are on the motor vehicle. Colorful lights, red light, purple light, blue light, and these color, multicolored lights. Get them off. I've noticed some trends out there where there is different type of license plates on motor vehicles. Only the Jamaican issued driver's license plates are to be on the motor vehicles. Once you transport any passenger in a motor vehicle, ensure that they are buckled, whether they are on the front or they are on the back. Um, the seatbelt gives people a fighting chance to survive the crash. Many people have died who never give themselves a fighting chance. Through the Jamaica Crime Observatory Crime Enhancement Project, the Jamaica Social Investment Fund is building government's capacity to plan crime-fighting strategies.
The Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, is helping to build safer communities through the Jamaica Crime Observatory Enhancement Project. Established in 2011, the Jamaica Crime Observatory is a web-based crime and violence data bank hosted by the Ministry of National Security. The project is seeking to enhance the capacity of the Ministry of National Security, the Jamaica Constabulary Force and a number of other stakeholders in their response to data collection, data entry, data dissemination and data analysis. This is a World Bank funded initiative. It is valued at 44 million Jamaican dollars. The upgrade to the system falls under JCIF's Integrated Community Development Project, ICDP. The aim of the ICDP is to improve basic infrastructure and social services delivered to 18 targeted at-risk communities. JCIF seeks to use data from the Crime Observatory to inform the planning of social and technical interventions to be implemented in these communities. To ensure a concerted approach towards crime prevention and management, a number of government entities supply statistics to the Crime Observatory. These include the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Ministry of Health, the Registrar General's Department and the Institute of Forensic Science and Legal Medicine. We collect data from murder statistics to sexual offences, uh, suicide, traffic fatalities, uh, hospital um, data, fatal shootings uh, for various parishes in Jamaica. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is the primary source of data for the observatory. Under the project, the Statistics and Information Management Unit of the JCF has received handheld GPS devices to assist in increasing the accuracy of data collected. From the perspective of the crime scene, the forensic crime scene analysts utilize the handheld devices provided by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund to map the exact location of each crime. The devices are also able to take photographs of various of the environment within which the crime occur. With that information, the analysts are allowed, are able to get a better context within which the crime occur. And that has been very significant in our analysis process. In addition, um, the, the gadget also assists us to be able to do analysis, temporal analysis of the time crime take place. If you plot those information on a graph, you can see over a period of time, you can be able to determine trend, so you can do trend analysis. As part of the JCIF funding, the unit also received laptops, desktop computers, firewall devices, servers, UPS devices and software packages to improve the efficiency of processing the data collected. It allows us to provide data to the Crime Observatory in a much faster turnaround time than the monthly cycle that we usually provide the data to the Crime Observatory. Additionally, two data entry clerks have been employed by the unit to assist with the timely input of information into the system. The Ministry of National Security will also receive funding to engage the services of a crime analyst. What the engagement of the crime analyst will do is that they will help to help with better forecasting and predicting utilizing data which is in the, in the crime observatory. The project, which started in 2017, will also fund the training of seven Ministry of National Security staff and eight persons from the Jamaica Constabulary Force in the areas of system maintenance, spatial analysis, and the use of ArcGIS software technology. Improvements to the Jamaica Crime Observatory are essential to various stakeholders in the formulation of policies and strategies to keep Jamaicans safe. What the Crime Observatory is able to do is provide us with good, timely, accurate data for us able to craft our policies and from crafting our policies we're able to, to then craft acceptable strategies to help with the crime and violence and citizen security. With geographic information system we can actually pinpoint the exact location of a crime 
we can pinpoint the area such as a shop or a bar that is likely to be affected by a particular type of crime which means that we can practice preventative policing we can actually preempt what is likely to take place put in strategy in order to prevent those occurrences through the jamaica crime observatory enhancement project the jamaica social investment fund is enhancing the efficient collection and analysis of crime and violence statistics, building on the capacity of the government to better plan crime-fighting strategies. It's always beautiful in Jamaica. Everything usually be green and pretty. We have beautiful water. Temperature that is normal temperature. The water never cold. We've been into business for about 13 years. J-U-S-C, C-Triple-O-L. Just cool. It's spelled with three zero. We make three different types of pudding. We make potato, we make cornmeal, and we make total. This is the cornmeal, okay? That's actually almost the last process. What he's going to do now, he's going to put the gel on top. Within no time, he has to take it off because the gel gives it a nice taste. We have the people like Shelly and Fraser came here. We have, you know, you could name the biggest artists, Shabba Ranks, name them all. Being the man, they all come here and buy their pudding. This is what we grew up on. Now, when the people come to Jamaica, everybody, as soon as they land off the plane, this is where they come. They want to taste this pudding because it's bring them back to the old days. The long time days when they was a kid growing up and they used to sit on the fire and watch their mama, their grandmother bake the pudding. We try not to change off our roots, we try to keep it that way. And not only that, we have a lot of love because we're all about love. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency has simplified the process of seeking help by dialing only three digits, 211. That's the designated helpline to report cases of child abuse, missing children, or child trafficking. One of the biggest threats to Jamaica today is child abuse. The good thing is that we are on our way to improving it. And the latest improvement is happening in the form of a helpline, one that's free accessible 24 hours daily and is easy to remember. The 211 helpline to report child abuse is now in effect. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, has renewed its efforts to have a three-digit telephone number to replace the existing 10-digit line 888-PROTECT, assigned to the National Children's Registry, the NCR. The NCR operates as the main point of contact for persons making reports of child abuse, neglect and missing children. It also handles reports of child trafficking, which is handled by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons, NATFATIP. But why was it so important for this renewed call to take effect, and why now? We have always thought it, um, it would be easier if we have a three-digit number that children could easily remember. Now, in 2020, when we were all affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we saw a significant reduction in the number of reports coming in. Um, we did not believe that it was a case where children were not being abused because, you know, most abuse takes place in the homes. So we wanted to reach out to children. Um, at that time, we were pushing our WhatsApp line. We were saying to children, if you um, feel unsafe, if you feel at risk, you can reach out to us on WhatsApp, you know, because WhatsApp is free. Um, and of course, we're encouraging persons to call our 888 Protect number. But you'd appreciate that 888 Protect is not so easy to remember, especially for young children. The time was right for us to um, launch a three-digit three line um, that would be easy for children to remember. Um, easy for everybody to remember. Still, the 888 Protect helpline has been in effect for quite some time now. So, what exactly will this new 211 line mean for its operation? So, the 888 Protect number is still in operation. What we actually did was put the 211 onto the 88 Protect, if that makes any sense. So, 
If you call either number, they both terminate at the same place. So the calls will come into the same lines. But what we're hoping is that as time progresses, you know, more and more persons will become aware of 211 and we will eventually phase out the ATT to protect. And here's the best part about this new response to child abuse. There are designated officers who are armed with the right toolkit to manage these calls. So we already had a system um, at the National Children's Registry for manning the ATT to protect line. In addition to ATT to protect, we had a number of other lines that persons could call. So what we did was just to boost that system to ensure that when the calls come into 211, we would be able to handle them. So we have a set of trained registration officers, they're social workers, you know, um, who are equipped to handle the calls when they come in. They're trained in how to handle various types of callers. Um, they're trained with skills of assessment and they will do the necessary referrals to the investigating partners. These partners are required to initiate an investigation and provide the NCR with an update within three months. Furthermore, the NCR's contact center will be expanded to provide immediate psychotherapeutic response for children who may call for help. This is being done under the Public Sector Modernization Program through the ICT Expansion Program currently being rolled out by the Ministry of Finance's Transformation and Implementation Unit, TIU. Anyone in Jamaica, Madam Speaker, can take up their phone and dial 211. You can be a partner in carrying the message to rescue our children. And we do mean anyone, from any network, at any time. We actually, you know, met with the telecommunications providers, um, came to some agreement that this is how we'll be proceeding in the interest of the nation's children. So the 211 is completely free regardless of what network you're calling from. Our nation's children are our priority, and this is being reflected in the CPFSA's targeted programs and services to respond effectively to the needs of vulnerable children and their families. The 211 helpline is just the latest step in the right direction. If you know of or suspect that a child is being abused, reach out to the CPFSA or call 211. Up next, farming solutions for homes with small outdoor areas or none at all. Urban gardening is the cultivation of vegetables, fruits, aromatic plants and herbs in an enclosed space or your backyard. It's an ideal way for those with little space to participate in the process of food production, saving money while feeding themselves. Practical application is one of the best methods of imparting new knowledge. The Jamaica 4 H clubs ran with that concept when it set up an urban garden display project at 123 Duke Street in downtown Kingston. This project was born out of the COVID pandemic where we recognize that food production has to become everybody's business. Traditionally, most of our food in Jamaica is cultivated in rural areas. We believe that even if you are in a dormitory community without land space, we believe that there is still an opportunity for you to produce. In this urban model, you would realize that we are demonstrating how you can do air planting, how you can do planting on your fence line, how you can produce food in different media. And so we are utilizing a fully integrated approach to from you know collecting your own water by generating your own nutrient within the urban garden model setting to be able to produce the food that you will eat. There are a few vital things that plants need to grow. These include sunlight, proper temperature, moisture, air and nutrients. One of the basic pieces of technology inside our urban model garden is to demonstrate rainwater harvesting. From your roof, you're collecting your water, not only your roof, but just anywhere there's a runoff, because it could be a runoff underground, 
and what you want to do is to be able to have some storage capacity. In the 4-H urban garden, the water is stored underground to ensure there is more available space on the surface. Of course, your environment will determine the most effective setup for your system. One of the good things about Jamaica, other than when we have night, we always have sunlight. There are some plants that require a lot more lighting than others. And so one of the things we demonstrate or we, we share with urban gardeners is where you put what. So there are some plants that you can do indoors. There are some plants that will strive and do better if they were to be grown outdoor, whether you're using container, you're using your, 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 your fencing, you're using backyard, front yard, or your rooftop. Another feature that is demonstrated here is composting. To my right is our composting area and we have a rotocomposting bin as well as we have a, a regular bin. And in fact, just about all the vegetative matter and the, 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 the waste from the birds and the animals um, across there are in fact all placed into our composters and that is broken down to provide organic matter. Because again, you know, your, your soil needs that for aeration, it needs it to add humus, and, um, and that's what is going to allow your plants to grow well. And all this can be done in your own space. Livestock is another avenue you can choose in your urban gardening. Rabbit rearing is an excellent source of protein, and it doesn't require much space. You can also use the plants in the garden to feed them. Other animals can be included, such as chicken and fish. We do a lot of different birds here. You can do your ornamental fish, you can do your tilapia, you know. Um, so, and you can also do your, your, your domestic hens. Because that's something we are also promoting, is to get back to those um, domestic hens for eggs and meat. There are many things you can do in terms of livestock. It's as, as almost as diverse as you're going for crops. To replicate this model in your urban space, speak with your Jamaica 4-H Club's parish officer. You can receive seeds and other planting material to get you started. One of the biggest threats right now in the world is not war or COVID, is really to have a sustainable supply of food. And the view is that no longer can we only rely on the traditional food producer. I think food production has to become everybody's business. And I think the extent to which we are able to get all our people to produce some of what you will consume, I think is one of the greatest steps we can take in looking at the phenomenon of food sustainability. A strategy the Jamaica 4-H Society has started to aid in maintaining sustainable food within communities. And if you haven't begun the process in your space yet, you can start now. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.